I bought the LA Clippers. <laughs> She has justly achieved crossover success outside of our vibrant little creative ghetto. Uh, <laughs> she is to whom we look for, uh, for proof that if we create works of profound depth and enduring our artistry if we dig deep enough for personal and artistic truths and are courageous enough to put them down in ink, the world will listen. She is one of ours, and, but she is also one of the great masters of sequential art. Now, sequential art is perhaps an overly intellectual term for comics, <laughs> but it describes the fundamental nature of the form, how a series of static images, snapshot, snapshots of the, of, the, of the scene, if you will, when laid out in sequence, can form a story. So here are a few snapshots to illustrate a little of the story of her comics and Allison's place in them. 1972. A group of women cartoonists were gathered in San Francisco amidst empty bottles of red wine and a cloud of pot smoke. <laughs> They produced their first all-female underground comic series, aptly titled Women's Comics. And that's women with an I and comics with an X. <laughs> Trina Robbins' contribution is Sandy Comes Out, about her roommate Sandy Crumb, the sister of Robert Crumb, who came out as a lesbian and moved into a gay hippie commune in the Heat Ashbury, which is what one did at this time. <laughs> it's also the first comic story about a queer person that is neither erotic nor derogatory. 1973. In the musty basement of, a, of an Oregonian and radical women's karate cooperative. It's a hard thing to say fast. So. <laughs> um, Mary Williams is boldly and stably copies of her photo, uh, photocopy comic, Come Out Comics, which she distributes through mail order for a dollar. This is the first lesbian comic book and the beginning of an artistic movement. 1980. A nervous Howard Cruz is in the post office nailing out a huge stack of leaflets asking for submissions for a new anthology, Gay Comics. Yeah, next. He has every right to be nervous as this is his own personal coming out uh, to the com comics industry in which he makes his living. He is mailing the one to every cartoonist he knows without knowing who will be offended by it, as it's impossible to know who is queer or queer friendly in the closet of the comics industry. But his courage is rewarded, and the series becomes the backbone of a vibrant queer comics underground. 1983. A simple line drawing of a woman slumped over a cup of coffee labeled Mary Ann, dissatisfied with the morning brew, thanks to watch out for it. Yeah. Yeah. Appears in the feminist newspaper Woman News. Alison Bechdel's strip swiftly gains multiple panels, a remarkable cast of characters, and distribution of virtually every queer newspaper in the country. Over the course of 25 years, Thanks to Watch Out For becomes one of the most expansive and important worlds ever built in comics or in queer literature. 2006, an ink wash drawing of a young girl held aloft by her father's legs over an ornate carpet straight into fly launches readers into fun. Allison's graphic novel memoir. That her relationship with her closeted father is a critically acclaimed runaway success and is truly one of the great American graphic novels. 2012, a red and gold painting of a woman's vanity table, the dominant image of which is a tray with two female figures sitting connected but facing apart, illustrates the cover of Are You My Mother, uh, Allison's follow up graphic novel. It solidifies Allison's unique literary voice and her place in the comics canon. 2014, the sweaty basement of Cooper's Union is packed full of queers. <laughs> As Allison Bechdel receives a Lambda Literary Foundation Trustee Award for Excellence in Literature, the crowd goes wild. <laughs>
conversation, I, I remember receiving my first Lambda Book Award in 1991. Um, it's a lovely, gauzy memory. <laughs> I had never been to any kind of awards ceremony before, so it felt super glamorous to fly down to New York from Vermont. <laughs> <laughs> and I hadn't been to the city in a long time, so of course the first thing I did was go directly to the Oscar Wilde Memorial Bookshop. I had never been actively 
actually snubbed before. It was, it was quite exhilarating. <laughs> Maybe it was my dorky suit. I don't know. In any case, I grabbed my, my Lammy and got out of here. But here we all are, 23 years later. <laughs> I just want to say that after all this time, I feel no less intimidated by all of you. No less awkward in your presence. Uh, no less panicked about remembering who each of you are. And exactly what you have written or published or done. And no less grateful to be a part of it all. Uh, getting that first money made me feel recognized and encouraged. And getting the, the trustee award. Um, wow, these are glass now. These could be blue sight. <laughs> Thank you very much. 